why Tiger Woods hates Greg Norman. Did you know Tiger Woods and Greg Norman are no friends and even hate each other? Stay tuned in this video, we will go into all the details why Tiger Woods hates Greg Norman. Tiger Woods was offered a staggering amount of money to join Live Golf, but he declined. Why did Tiger decline? Greg Norman, the CEO of the Fledgling League, claimed that Woods turned down a deal worth between $700 million and $800 million in an interview with Fox News on Monday, before Norman became CEO of Liv in October 2021. The idea had already been forwarded to Woods' team, Norman continued. Why must everyone try to determine what is wrong with Woods or why he loses every major tournament he plays in? Look, Tiger can move needles, right? Informed the network, Norman. Therefore, it seems to sense that you would look at the finest of the best. So before I became CEO, they had approached Tiger. So certainly that number is located someplace in that area. The 46-year-old Tiger Woods' net worth was assessed by Forbes to be at least $1 billion in June. In an earlier statement, Norman said that Woods turned down an offer that was mind-blowingly massive and for high nine figures. He asserted that Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods declined to sign on with Liv to protect their generational legacies. Norman, who held the second most weeks at number one in the world behind Woods before his great run on the tour, and Woods are not close. Furthermore, it was obvious from Woods' open remarks at St. Andrews that he and LIV officials hold different philosophical views. Woods stated that he didn't understand why players would forego the opportunity to compete in major championships to join a tour that does not now give world ranking points in some of the sharpest public comments of his career. What was the incentive to go out and earn it in the mud, he said, when the pay was promised ahead in 54 hole competitions? Reading the defectors, he remarked, I disagree with it. I believe what they have done is turned away from what has enabled them to be in this situation. LIV, which is funded by the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, is said to have spent nearly $1 billion to entice some of the most well-known golfers away from the PGA Tour, including Phil Mickelson and Dustin Johnson and Bryson DeCambeau. The third of Liv's eight planned events for this year has recently ended. The rival circuit is anticipated to launch its full league format and a 14 tournament calendar in 2023. Since late last year, Woods has been against LIV Golf he made his strongest remarks at the British Open when he claimed that players who accepted the money provided by the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund had turned their backs on the PGA Tour that made them famous. It was unclear when Woods received an offer. That figure was available before I was CEO. The third LIV Golf Invitational was held at Trump International in Bedminster, New Jersey, on Sunday. So that number has been out there, yes. Norman said in an interview with the Fox News. And as you can see, Norman added, Tiger is a needle mover. And of course, you have to look at the finest of the best. So before I became CEO, they had approached Tiger. Therefore, sure, that number was in that area somewhere. Several sources from the UK claim that Phil Mickelson earned a signing bonus of $200 million and Dustin Johnson received a signing bonus of $150 million. Each tournament features 48 man fields and play 54 holes without a cut and award $25 million in prize money. For the next season, Norman announced a 14 tournament program. Only one player from the top 20 in the world is a part of the LIV Golf right now. Johnson, who is ranked 18th. Sharp criticism of the series and the participating participants has resulted from the funding source, which is seen as an effort to deflect attention from the series' human rights record and connections to the 9-11 terrorist attacks. When asked why his rival tour has riled up American golf fans so much, Norman replied simply, I don't know. I don't care, Norman said. I adore the game so much and I want to see golf develop, and we at LIV view it as a chance not just for men, but also for women. The LIV Golf Invitational takes a month off during the FedEx Cup playoffs on the PGA Tour before returning around Labor Day weekend and playing in the Chicago suburbs two weeks later. Woods, who has pushed to be healthy enough to compete in the 150th Open this week while he recovers from severe leg injuries sustained in a car accident last year, was critical of the new series and questioned why anyone would even bother practicing given the guaranteed amounts of money involved. I don't agree with that, when asked about his fellow pros who have been enticed to join the contentious tour, which is being led by Australian icon Greg Norman. Woods stated, I think what they've done is they've turned their back on what has allowed them to reach to this position. 
Also, who knows what will happen soon concerning world ranking points. The entry requirement for major championships. Some of these athletes might never have the opportunity to compete in important championships. That may happen, we are not yet certain about that. The British Open Championship, twice, was not invited by the organizers to this week's past championship events at St Andrews. I am aware that Greg attempted to organize a breakaway tour in the early 1990s. He is attempting to make it work now because it didn't work before, Woods continued. I still don't understand how that's best for the game. The regulatory organizations of the game, the major events, and what the European Tour and PGA Tour stand for and have accomplished are all mentioned. They may perceive it in a different way than Greg does. Greg has taken some actions that I don't believe are ideal for golf, I said, returning to what is arguably the most historic location. It was the proper decision to not invite Norman. Despite the PGA Tour and DP World Tour attempting to prohibit them, British Open organizers followed the US Open's example and permitted dissident golfers to compete at St Andrews. As a result, Thursday's opening round at St Andrews will feature four-time major champion Brooks Koepka, Sergio Garcia, Bryson DeCambo, Dustin Johnson and former Open champion Phil Mickelson. The Live Tour will use a board meeting at the birthplace of golf on Wednesday to demand official status in the world rankings, according to The Guardian. Players connected to the Live Series, who do not receive any ranking points, may have a harder time competing in major tournaments in the future. All of the major championships organizations are irresponsible for deciding that. The three-time Open champion, who also won at St Andrews in 2000 and 2005, noted that it is possible that some players would never, ever get the chance to play in a major event or to experience this right here. Walk down the fairways at Augusta National. Woods, who has won 15 major championships and shares the lead with Sam Snead with 82 PGA Tour victories, mused aloud on whether the Live Series' generous prize packages may deter players from competing. What is the incentive to practice? He asked. What are these players doing for guaranteed money? What motivates people to work in the mud to earn a living? The 54 whole events in the series, which are supported by Saudi Arabia's public investment fund and supported by Norman, provide record prize money of $36 million with shotgun starts and no cuts. The $20 million in total prizes were awarded at this week's Open. Woods stated, You're just getting paid a lot of money up front and playing a few tournaments with N54 halts. In particular, if the LIV organization doesn't receive world ranking points and the major tournaments adjust their entry requirements, I simply don't see how that move is helpful in the long run for a lot of these players. Did Norman or any other critics of Woods consider the possibility that McIlroy is a very talented player who has earned his spot and that Woods is older and not nearly as physically able to handle 72 holes in four days as he once was? Woods is currently not quite a lost cause. At age 36, he has won three competitions and placed in the top 10 in five more. It is not as though McElroy is outperforming Woods either, since he has placed in the top 10 at five additional events and won four PGA tournaments this year. Nobody can make Woods feel intimidated. It's okay if he isn't the same player he once was. It seems that Norman doesn't want to discuss that. He did bring it up, but he kind of dismissed it as a cycle. Why does Woods need to be intimidated by McElroy? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. That's the end of this video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.